in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed in the beginning listen was the word and it says the word was with God then it says the word was God it says that he was with God in the beginning now here's the part it says through him all things how many things now when the Bible tells you something made everything you should respect it are we together now yes that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of God that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the Bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth, it means that he's giving you access. It's a scepter of dominion. That with this word, when he grants it unto you, then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Now, truthfully speaking, it may take a while, you see, because God is not a magician. It's a system. That means your participation is required. But that line upon line. My brothers and my sisters, let me give you a guarantee. And I tell you this in the name of the Lord. If you listen to the things that I teach you. And you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny. It's a matter of time. Forget about the things you do not see. And focus on what God is giving you what God is giving you is greater than any car you can buy trust me you must have something greater than material things to get material things you can't have something less than material things and then have these things God is if all God gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you he will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may, be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God. God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master 
of the sense realm he knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses the sensory perceptions that come from his environment so he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what God is doing in your life if it is true you are receiving favor where is it and you stand and say boy it's true oh, Kai, God you serve I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his Gary are we together now and the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm but do you not know the bible says while we look not at the things which are seen the things which are seen you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of god's word not our experiences your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that god is faithful so if you depend on your experiences you will see gaps in supposed gaps in the faithfulness of god you will see obvious things god did not do supposedly so you take your mind your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting god's integrity you use the word of god and say lord my life may not have a b and c yet but i know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail and not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity you have cheated satan when you get to that level because satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life where is the money if you say god is faithful where is the anointing you are a man of god and you claim god has raised you to be a prophet to the nations in one year nobody invited you for anything is it really true that the hand of god is at work in you where are the gentiles that should come to your light at first you will claim you have faith but the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you and he said am i called or what if it's a demonic attack let me know and repent and just find somewhere but i mean am i called and god says just listen to me but if you continue staying my brothers and my sisters one day it will do you like a dream you will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say lord what is this and then men will say like they always say he came out of nowhere and god will say keep quiet nobody comes out of nowhere he says meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them if if you give yourself halfway hoping so that if it fails at least you can put your leg somewhere it, it doesn't work like that let me tell you you throw yourself in this thing and say if i perish i perish this this scientific christianity i know god is faithful but let me patch him with an uncle so one leg is here one leg so that whatever happens your ego is not strong and that very ego is why you may never see the power of god because you have not proven to god that you have thrown all to him and you just come and say god if you don't help me i don't have an option god says this is what i like now that you have stepped aside let me show you that i'm a great god are we blessed tonight i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you you know most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently even pastors most men of god don't know why they hold weekly fellowships others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before god empty-handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God.
is one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the spirit of god that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of god to learn the ways of god life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category i'm passionate about what i do not know i'm passionate about the danger i may submit myself to not knowing what i should know and so my heart is always panting to find out lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do i not know if you do not know look at me for instance if i'm standing at the edge of this stage and i do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down i'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because i'm not aware it will not touch me i will fall and it can kill me is that true so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for god to expose us to the ways of god and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of god in the midst of his people is 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 not going to be possible to present a god that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him it's one thing to know that the possibilities of god are encapsulated in this bible but it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it you don't need to experience everything but that god does something in your life that you can now say kai god now i know i know so the next time you are talking to someone and says which god you say no forget about the apostle look at my life i'm now a testimony an epistle that god is able to do this and that hallelujah there is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word the spirit of distraction you can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking you are learning no the bible says that the sower sows the word right there satan is in the midst of of, of god's people roaming around and looking for careless hearts and he comes by himself and takes the word so that you are ever learning oh this topic ah i know it i remember genesis chapter this verse this but there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. so please let's challenge ourselves and say lord it is true that i don't serve you just for results but lord i'm determined I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life if you see God's hand in one two three areas and remaining four five six you are encouraged but where you get zero over six of God's hand is not enough testimony are we together it is the Word of God that builds it is the Word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom like a domain and the word of god allocates you come darling and says you stand here come my dear stand here come this is your place of dominion you have believed in me enough the word of god gives you your allocation in life so this person starts somewhere and god says there is a seat i have given you in the prophetic and the word of god gives you that position you stay there and you know it's an office backed up by god himself no man will be able to stand against you this one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony not of your desire for ministry listen as a testimony of your staying power with god for as a prince you have power with god you can roam around and say god has called me into business life drives you out you come again and say 
um, God called me into family and you roam around life and there is no space for you he dug a well they came and covered it they say it's not your space he dug another well they covered it when he dug the first one they gave him space and he called it Rehoboth he said God has given me my own space you need to have your own place in life dominion is territorial until you find your jurisdiction of dominion you cannot begin to walk in it you will hate people you will be angry you will quarrel people you will hate others that God is blessing in their area of dominion it is the word of God that allocates while the word of God is being taught mystery after mystery principle after principle the spirit of God is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance and so this lady hears that God is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call and this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there and by the time these people have been around God for a long time you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension this roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg lava pupa adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now an allocation yes you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this how you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience you begin to see these spiritual allocations you can know god where are you taking me to just follow it first starts as a general prayer it first starts as just studying the word of god to know him let me tell you there is nobody that god puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him that's wrong training the you start on a neutral ground lord i love you i need your presence i need your glory not i need a church not i need a title not i need a pa not lord i've suffered in this family won't i be rich no sir God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there so god is calling you into an apostolic ministry but you will start as an evangelist for two years you will be an evangelist and then you will switch and be a teacher and then you'll be like a missionary the final destination is here by the time you build a camp there i am evangelist emeka by the time that apostolic grace is coming you will cause confusion because you are among evangelists but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism and you will start teaching based on your experience and you will start saying the rest are wrong whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you get to the final destination please place value on the word of god place value on the not just the reading of the word you have been reading it place value on its ability to give you something in life look let me tell you this if I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that 
they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what i'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when god gives you a spiritual inheritance no man no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that god will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths i have found there is rest when you find this all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now there are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you are saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that him has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already God bless you bless you guys thank you we must have passion for the word of God I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year in fact when the Lord put this in my heart I said oh Lord but I've cried to you again and again to allow me preach this and um, I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful Kai. God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom god hell and men will know you found something there are things when you find only god will know you found it there are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know by, by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight i will just do an introduction of it true riches just an introduction it's not part one we have a series next 
we'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year but and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all settle down and listen and let God bless you because when we hear riches the first thing we think about because of the way I don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual Luke chapter 16 and verse 11 Luke chapter 16 and verse 11 read with me believers one two read Ah, that's not you be delivered from let's read one more time one to read uh-huh hold on it's a question who will commit to you so this one is not an achievement people commit it to you listen who will commit to your trust the true riches unfaithful mammon the word unfaithful suggests instability is that true something that is not reliable and it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon who will commit to your trust when i saw this scripture it blessed and changed my life who will commit to your trust true riches there's something in this kingdom called true riches and the bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access he's not just trying to tell you the, he's saying who else who else can commit to you this mystery that we call true riches thank you ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 2 to 8 listen very carefully and you understand something powerful tonight Paul is speaking now. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, verse 3, how that by revelation, listen, he made known unto me, what? The mystery. By revelation, he made known. I didn't search it out. He brought it and gave it to me. As I wrote afore in few words. We are reading to verse 8. Verse 4. Whereby when ye read. Ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. And of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. 8. Halabakotiada. <laughs> Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace. So it's a grace. Is this grace given? What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles. Help me. The unsearchable riches. Not just the gospel. 
that I should preach the unsearchable, unfathomable riches. Look at the description that is used there. He didn't say that I should preach the gospel, that I should preach. They, they are mysteries. The Bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the Bible calls the unsearchable riches of Christ. These are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting Psalm, Psalm 8, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that, and he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible, this is the Pauline epistle, what is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business, Naira and Kobo, no, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God, by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it it's not just by fasting and praying it's not just by reading a book god comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of christ this is what the bible calls true riches what is it that's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere. When Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70 and God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus a donkey falls down he knocks me and calls me and says I want to give you I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian the dispenser that's why he started by saying look when my teachings are hard don't criticize me there is a grace i received it god came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing and he calls the name the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the lord opened me up to this i was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and god is my witness and i tell you this i'm a i'm a student i'm not ashamed when i learn things from people and i build 
you know i'm not i'm not somebody who is is is, is arrogant to say all this and that I ha, i'm a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way i look at you is the same way god was opening me up to the word see this this is the key the mystery that connects to this and many times when i listen to people fathers of faith and i hear them teach i say god this is what you were telling me I say because i'm the one who told them to not everything in your life will come by studies i'm not teaching you to be lazy but we're teaching we're teaching this is this is this is a school of the spirit not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture my brothers and my sisters there are different ways god imparts knowledge to us one of it is through the stillness of your spirit be still and know that i am god and one of it is access revelation spiritual illumination god just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth these spiritual blessings these unsearchable riches what you call true riches they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of god's life here and now The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage there has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge where we sustain an advantage it is not it is not something hidden that life is harsh my brothers and my sisters listen to me it is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm mm -mm. from tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations etc etc everything looks like it's against you you only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage are we together now yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that i will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability i have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that God has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided and you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage are we together now bless you thank you so true riches I define are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of God's life here and now we're just doing an introduction 
Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace. Everybody say the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. It says they shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. This is what validates the fact that we are kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed them should be. It's a mistake there. Because these are the four and twenty elders. Redemption was not for them so they are speaking over the saints so the word us there is a mistake in translation redeem them to god by thy blood out of every kindred listen now every tongue every people every nation verse 10 and has made us now them you understand and has made us unto our god what kings and priests and the bible says and we shall reign where on earth so God's dominion agenda is real. He wants us to reign. He wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now I hope you understand, let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities, that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many, he is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe, you will mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved, as it were? To receive new life. Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted. We're refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one. Right? So, a separate entity called a man. Another separate entity called a woman. By covenant, they become one. One, not physically, but one in the spirit. Recognized by God himself. Are we together now? That's why the Bible says, let no man do asunder, it put asunder. It's a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened. Still by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the operation of the word, the logos, and the operation of the Spirit of God begin in your life. You begin to learn the ways of God. And then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience. And then your mind is educated again. The light 
is driving out that darkness and gradually gradually by all those exercises conformity and transformation not impartation yet conformity and transformation these things will remain for a very long time in your life and then you begin to see the grace speaking are we together now because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge so it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil there are things that are correct so god will not reset your mind and then he will do that only with your permission so it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years that's how slow you wanted god to take you are we together now so you find out that after 10 years the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with god is not showing in your life god is limited by your yieldedness limited by your alignment this is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres and then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace people who by his predetermined counsel he has called into certain offices and dimensions usually god will do an unusual work in them are we together now a work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness that's why they can't take credit for it it was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide so they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is the only thing they have to do is correct their errors not pray for new visions they have been seeing it since it's just that they have been interpreting nonsense so what they are repenting of is not it's not it's not a hazy vision there are people who even they got born again and there and then they started seeing visions there and then others came from priesthood a wrong key forced the door to, you understand what i mean a wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access I, I believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll, we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when I look at in my life sometimes I just get down on my knees and I say God thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful I found them and they are very powerful can I give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God the goodness of God what is this you will know now that it is that grace that is released on you if this grace is not present you cannot have conscience it is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of god allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance 
but the goodness of God also allows for continual repentance the word repent is not for sinners I've told you this it's not a word that is just left for sinners it's a kingdom expression a system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of God's glory it's called repentance let's look at a very serious scripture Romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 just write it down and let's read we're Bible students Romans 2 1 to 4 ready I will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this O man that judges them which do such things and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God now look at verse 4 read with me please or despised thou the what riches hold on stop let's not rush despised thou the remember we're talking of true riches we're fishing them out now that there is something called the riches of his goodness what does it do and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leaded thee to repentance if you ever repent it is the goodness of god that came to you it's not something you did by your strength to say oh i think I... no the the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that god has been good to you this is the bible it says it is one of the two riches given to the saints the riches of god's goodness hmm. are we still together tonight did you know that the riches of god or the goodness of god is one of the true riches of the kingdom many people just ah oh god when the bible says surely goodness we quote it every time surely goodness and mercy i think we are singing a special number this is a very deep mystery if the goodness of god does not go with you i will tell you i will show you people from the bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches you will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of god's goodness read with me one to read speaking lies in hypocrisy uh-huh having their conscience seared with a hot iron do you know what this means that means you have lost the ability to recognize this is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman bring out a child and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand once the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of christ so god looks at men and sends his goodness to them and all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level and they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it keep that scripture again please romans 2 and verse 4 the riches of his goodness not just his goodness the riches the wealth you see that a man who had this was david david knew the goodness of god that's why he became a man after god's heart lucifer didn't have this if Luce, no no demon has this lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of god 
so repentance is in it it's not that he doesn't want to do it has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds why didn't he say god i've watched this thing for a long time let's talk you are my creator no it is the goodness of god that allows men to ever see the need for repentance hmm. evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades don't just pray for signs oh god let them know i was called mm -mm. pray intelligently lord let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had charles g finney are we together now they had this in in very abundant measures they understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of god when we say the goodness of god we just mean his ability to be benevolent it's more than that the primary assignment of the goodness of god is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness second hmm. peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight he says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of God come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of Christ hmm. let's try another So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign. So that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared, God made somebody to give me miracle a lot. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align, so that his glory can better find expression in your life. The riches of his goodness. The next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house, the key is not counseling. The key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of god i i got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting god to help them to start a life and the the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their um, whatever it is and this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it to help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me 
that was how they had to look for uh, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of god they are the people we call heartless conscienceless like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of nigerians this is what they need are we together now number two Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water where um shop are we together get pounded yam and soup where restaurant get injection for malaria where hospital get wisdom where it's not that i don't want to get it where is it where do they find it it says get wisdom then get understanding they go together all through scripture you see this now um next year i'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations and one of it will be how spirits work is they are all dimensions of the holy spirit but you will notice that there are classifications there is an operation of the holy spirit that never works as a person you understand it it must be in twin walking that way it was the mystery that jesus used in sending the disciples he sent them two by two never sent them one everywhere you see wisdom from genesis to revelation you will see understanding going with them and then sometimes they can form a tag team knowledge wisdom understanding three of them a threefold cord that whoever stands in the middle it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, see it now again, get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is causing men to discern 
acknowledge and celebrate your relevance the bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men when thou dost embrace her last verse it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace you said you are a king but where is your crown wisdom is the holder of the crown it says she shall give a crown of glory it is through wisdom we find glory a king without a crown is not a king in ancient times when they defeated cities they not only removed the crown of the king they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city a a symbol the moment the king was captured and his head taken nobody fights again the battle was over and now the bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 dot not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together wisdom is crying understanding is adding her voice next verse reading to the end two she standed in the top of high places by the way in the places of the parts three let's hurry up she cried at the gates the place of exchange where men enter and go out wisdom says don't pass without me don't return without me at the entry of the city at the coming eat at the doors for unto you O men i call wisdom is speaking and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple simple there does not mean humble simple means unwise meaning there is there is no fortitude for comprehension it says understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart here for i will speak excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things seven for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips eight all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge receive my instruction and not silver hold on if i give you wisdom and i give you silver wisdom says please don't be foolish to choose silver leave silver fast and come to me and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies two things the bible says are better than rubies one wisdom to a virtuous woman and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it uh-huh i wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions i hope we have the grace to continue the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what i want you to do. now wisdom is giving you a manifesto like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out and he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him and he's saying by me kings reign if you see any king reigning on earth this is what enthroned him wisdom you see any king reigning in business in ministry is not just god wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice 16 by me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth 
I love them that love me and those who seek me early will find me that means it's not cheap to find wisdom he gives you a time to seek riches and honor you see why he said you should not choose silver because riches and honor are with me yea durable riches and righteousness my fruit is better than gold yea than fine gold and my revenue than choice silver i lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment will soon be there that i may cause those that love me to inherit talk to me i cause those who love me to inherit substance there is not money substance there is results tangibility i will fill their treasures go ahead the lord possessed me so this is how creation happened through wisdom a house is built wisdom is saying the lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old next verse i was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was when there was no depths i was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills was i brought forth while as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world when he prepared the heavens i was there when he set a compass upon the face of the depth when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the fountains of the deep when he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth three more verses or two then i was by him ah. as one brought up with him and i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delights were with the sons of men last verse now therefore unto me o ye children hearken to me O ye children for blessed are they that keep my ways wisdom one of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results that means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom what is wisdom the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom not the knowledge of it not the comprehension of it the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom what is wisdom the ability to use the word to produce supernatural results that's wisdom My brothers and my sisters i can show you scriptures upon scripture we're doing an introduction today supernatural wisdom that happened to men they rose on account of that wisdom let's look at one scripture first kings chapter 3 solomon god's portrait of wisdom you see that every once and again these men obtain one or more of these attributes and that's what they used to do business in the earth realm and they they dumbfounded the wisdom of men first kings chapter 3 and verse 9 we're reading to verse 13 from verse 9 solomon is praying now god is asking him what should i do and he says give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people verse 10 and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing to 13 and god said to him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself what 
long life neither has thou asked here it is again unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one to read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom uh-huh and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than ethan the ezrahite than heman than Kalkol, than dada all these guys are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we're still singing it there were songs that were written last month we're tired of it it tells you the dimension it's not that there, there's something wrong with the song the dimension from which the song came if it is that which is of the earth is earthy that which is of heaven is heavenly 33 and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high sop that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when God wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of Christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why I'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said, get wisdom. And I said, where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, 
wisest richest job is having a conversation where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding have you seen that they always go together next verse man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living ah where is the land of the living that means it's not found here it's not a commodity that is affordable in any market let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth mm -mm. it cannot be found the earth does not have the capacity to produce this it can produce sophia human wisdom that is a derivative of trial and error and science but not the wisdom that comes from above the depth said it is not in me the sea said it is not with me that means all these things go back all these things are storage devices on earth they hide things the depth there are things that the depth keeps and those who know it can say bring it out that's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say oh earth he said let the people praise thee this earth is not barren let the people praise thee this earth will start yielding meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth no wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof uh-huh it cannot be valued with the gold of offer nor with the precious onyx nor the sapphire next verse the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's the secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why i told you it is it is a grace this is not something you walk education cannot give it no when men possess this dimension of wisdom god gave it to men is one of the unsearchable riches of christ solomon possessed it and he did wonders ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery and you can see a very young frail person but carrying something ancient that was with god at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of god that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me satan has deceived us to chase after things god never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion 
when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of god so many people will tell you this is an interruption there are many men of god that will not focus listen many young nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of god just go all these pastors you are just lucky you are anointed you are anointed that's all let me hustle my life no sir no sir except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger and change what the wisdom of God does in your life let me tell you this learn this early in life whether people believe in you or not it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life if you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of Christ your anger is just beginning you will be angry till you die it will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say yet the spirit saith the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high eyes up so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen i have studied the church in nigeria for many years i have studied the church in africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed 
at the way people move this way when the holy ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the spirit of god is going because the anointing goes where the spirit is going wherever the voice of god is that's where his power is so if god's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry moses said don't send us from here moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will know i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean he will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace i have studied this subject of hearing god properly i can tell you hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing god the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy i can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of god most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and and by god's grace i've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for god to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and i will hear what you will say unto me read your bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when i learned this i learned this mystery from dr dk olukoya i was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if God helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces, you must be careful. Because most times, we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift, that prophetic operation is at work, it necessarily means you yourself are accurate. It's not true. Have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation 
with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the spirit you stand and watch and say I've heard him God is saying go left and everybody is saying go right use common sense you know you had God when you move left after five years people look at you I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do this ministry today my brothers and my sisters is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches you won't go down I'm not one person who comes all the time and say God said God said I'm very careful now we have especially we young people we have abused God said anybody just comes and says God said just because you felt like God said or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking there are tongues of men there are tongues of angels there is the voice of God are you getting what I'm saying now this is very powerful you must learn it there are times when I hear God speak everyone around me knows God has said the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith if it is God that you hear the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith hmm. and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me it's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there no here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano you can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn but you know God is very faithful. He will allow you. He knows we are students in the school of the spirit. Just keep playing around. But the day his majestic voice lands on your life, there is no power that can stop you. Let me tell you, God is not always speaking. God speaks, but he's not always speaking. A lot of people keep saying, God is always speaking. No, sir. Are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace. Because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke remember that in the realm of the spirit the voice is not the only way to speak light is a way of communicating love is a language it can speak so I can hear that's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are stay for verification when God spoke about koinonia to start three days we had set up the departments god has granted us grace i remember if you remember that time i was telling you god told me this and that and that people will come from nations and people this is what god said i remember saying it that time as at the time i said it i said i saw cgc this is not what i saw i saw it broken expanded what is this that i'm seeing i saw people standing parking filling the roads and you no know, like as usual every time you say god said you need grace yourself to believe it because there are times that you just sit and say okay now i'm calm it's like you you smoked uh, 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 what they call this thing and so you went high and to you you can even say look at the nonsense that i said and you listen to your own message and say hey, it's not exactly god and god said what are you saying i'm the one speaking we were preparing to start packaging our messages i was thanking god and trusting 
and blessing him for the anointing he had given me and just saying oh god thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us and here comes the voice of god no in this season you are not going to sell your messages facebook that time it was i mean it was even the first head of media's facebook page and he said just carry your messages and put them on mp3 put them on facebook don't put the videos just the audios and i will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth that's it my brothers and my sisters when god says sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said listen to me there are things god has said when god talks notice that god doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it so i stand upon my watch i'm not in a hurry to move god what are you saying in this season that's the reason why we have workers retreats that's why we have our own retreats a few weeks now i'm going to start my end of year retreat i'm telling you you don't know how excited i am at that time because many of you have gone no disturbances i just shut my phone and sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear god because there is as it were many voices many sounds and none of them is without significance the voice of house rent can interrupt what god is saying this spiritual haziness has a science the encumbrances of life can push you your child's school fees your life and god is saying fast for three days i say is it god is it a demon is it yes there are times that you check against the word of god but let me tell you there are times only god will help you because even you you don't know whether this is god again most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm that's why they don't understand years ago i've shared with you the story I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria and I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money I mean why sit here till we die remember the four lepers at least I should do one I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home and I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith and I did and I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna and a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me enter public transport oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith It's until the act has been done when you turn back on hindsight you say it has to be God who led me like this when you are passing through it you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting is when you look back and say eh. I entered that car I was just in rest rest you are supposed to be afraid you know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that until we passed Jaji I knew there was no hope you know if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira you can beg but I mean when well, well, you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare and then they now said everybody bring your money and people were bringing them but my god is my witness my heart was at peace this is what happens when it's god that is speaking you leave him to be responsible for the word i just obeyed and that was how someone brought out paid my transport fare i dropped at flyover here entered the bus happy because i felt at least whatever it is this one i'll pay and someone knew me in the car and paid i stopped in front of north gate with the same money i was with there it was a message god was saying look i am god by myself i can do it anyhow there are times i can send a helper to give you money there are times i say the helper is in the car enter and meet him there it doesn't matter where the helper is believe god enough to go there are times he parts the waters there are times he says walk on it let it just be that he see him are you hearing what i'm saying now 
you will need this for ministry when God sent us to go for our crusade we got up and moved like madmen what you see today my brothers and my sisters is a product of the voice of God you need the grace to hear God not grace for prophecy Lord let me hear you you, you, you look you can pray and say God search my frail person what is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me help me in that area there are some of you that your hearing you have not trained your hearing if you if god speaks through your ears you will not hear and so you are going to say lord give me a kind of dream that i will wake up and find myself standing i will know that this one was not a dream let me tell you if your heart is right god will give you there are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind mind how many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams you know this one is not my mind this is the voice of god unsearchable riches the hearing ear the seeing eye one time the storm was boisterous I think it was Peter or Paul and it was very obvious they were going to capsize and all of a sudden the hearing ear and the seeing eye an angel appears to him and speaks to him and says don't worry there shall be no loss and he calmed the people down and say hey relax an angel has appeared to me and he has said to me that there shall be no loss and the bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived an island called melita when you hear god you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no i'm sitting on the voice of god roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and he said god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and he said people we're ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us we are victims of the lack of hearing many of our parents were called into ministry they ran away not hearing and the blessing that would have come to us if they obeyed god it would have been easy you would have been born again since four years 
but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked and said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything, but my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray, and when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down, my friend. You are not hearing God. Just shut down. Lord, what is the devil trying to do? You are going to Abuja today. Next tomorrow, you are praying and it's like you saw the map of Kano. And then it's like you now saw London. <clears throat> shut down. Lord, what are you saying? Please hear what I'm, I'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience. Most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of God consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage 
this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately there are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god oh. i thought that it was god that said i should start the ministry i remember years ago when my well friends and all of that you know not really close friends will meet me and say apostle with the kind of grace you have start a tv ministry start this i told you about pfn when we had our first crusade pfn was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say start start a church we need you be careful not every good thing is god things don't have to be bad for you to leave them sometimes they can be good they are just not god There was a time i was preparing taking my bath years ago i had a meeting i don't know if it was in kaduna or one of these places i had prayed fasted prepared a powerful message as as i was taking my bath all of a sudden my peace i will come to that will discuss peace peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out the stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of god works he said he will speak peace peace is a voice peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water peace can tell you man of god this association you are joining is what will destroy you it doesn't mean they are fake it doesn't mean they are not of god but this association is what will bring down your grace man of god be careful That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream and in your dream you saw a mecca dying. But in the physical it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident and start praying and say hey, so this is how apostle will die <laughs> i i guarantee you to remain as a dream you don't know what is covering this man that is standing it's not pride do you know how many times death has tested me oh. you have been a shelter in the rain you have been a doctor when in pain lord you've been a listener when i call oh lord you've been my friend you have been a shelter in the rain you have been a doctor when in pain you have been a listener when i call oh lord you've been my friend listen no matter what you are going through today is nothing compared to the whiplash that ignorance and lack of preparation will bring i don't care what it is so long as you are breathing the bible says a time will come people will look for death and it will run away what kind of suffering will make a man look for death 
Sit down anywhere. Sit on the floor. It's better to sit on the floor. Don't be ashamed of the camera. We are not, we are not playing. We are not acting film here. This is, this is life. Find a place. Sit everywhere. Come and sit around you. Occupy some of these seats if you can. Just leave the minister's seats. Sit any other place. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. And I take God seriously. Say one more time in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. They are life to me. Because I found them. Hallelujah. I receive calls almost daily, text messages, hundreds of text messages every day. And the major issue is that many people call and they are asking for help. Families, Believers who are born again, pastors, great men and women of God who are trying to find meaning as to why their lives are the way they are. Are you listening to me? Every time we counsel people, we counsel every Mondays and there are families that come with unanswered questions listen the level of unanswered questions that are falling upon people are becoming too serious people look people are asking questions questions about their personal success questions about longevity questions about health science has failed the government has failed i was reading the paper about, I mean, um, online now, about um, Egypt and the commotion that is happening. And this country and all the things that are happening. And tears just filled my eyes. I said, Lord, I don't know what you did to me that made me to pay attention to your word. But I pray that the people in Koinonia will pay as much attention. Will pay as much attention. The Bible says, my son, pay attention to my words. You see, let me tell you something. The days of begging people for the things of God are over. Are you listening to me? Where you tell people, oh, come, we'll give you sweets, two, two tom-tom, one vix, one tom-tom for coming. And the people say, really? Will they give it? Or oh, there's cold and then we'll prepare tea for you. And people come, they say, that tea I will take. Those days are over. Because... Whether or not, see, everybody in hellfire today believes in Jesus. I hope you know. The only mistake is that they believe too late. The Bible teaches us that there is a time. Please project Lamentations 3.28. Lamentations 3.28. I forbid you. I forbid you from failing in life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I forbid you from entering prostitution as a result of not listening to this message. I forbid our brothers from becoming arm robbers. Arm robbers are not just the ones who jump fence. I forbid you from going to a harbor list because you think the word of God is not working. Do you know the number of people that patronize harbor list, Bishop? It's not a hidden thing again. Pastors, prophets, Apostles, everybody. Look at graduates running helter skelter around Nigeria. Did you know that many people who run back to Zaria don't just run back because of desire, they run back because of the pain and the severity of the frustrations. 
But there is a way. God cannot leave people in the dark. There is a way. Listen, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. You must search it out. You must search it out. Hallelujah. You must search it out. It is good for a man. Man doesn't mean a male figure. just means a human being. It is good for a man that he bear his yoke. When? When? What is it about the youth of a man? The Bible says the glory of men is their strength. Is that true? Bear the burden. Pay the price. That's why I say this every time. You will quote me in the future. No matter how you cry, I don't care how you are looking at me, I will say it. Hate me, I will say it. I will preach it. We will file you. When you become a wonder tomorrow, you will look for us and say thank you. See, when you are in the training ground, there are some things you don't think about. You don't say, ah, my makeup, this powder is 10,000. Uh -uh. Or you say, Kai, this is my suit. Is, uh -uh. When you are in the training ground, you are there for business. It is when you win that you will celebrate. Is that true? Now is the time for training. So when we say pray in tongues, don't just say, ah, this fine guy is still looking. Pray! Open your mouth and pray. If you don't pray, life will whip you and you will still open that mouth. It will be open. The only thing is for what? Either to announce your pain and tragedy to the world that cannot help. Or to cry before God, who is our help. I say, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. See, if you really get this thing, you have gotten it forever. Are you hearing me? I want one lady who can cook. You know, don't you know it's not pride. God has blessed you. You know you whether you're a caterer or something. Stand up, just one. Who is that? No, no, I'm not going to say you cook. It's an illustration. So, let's call the ones we are sure of. Opi, stand up. Oh yeah, now, stand up. Look at this, listen. If we ask you to make cake now, can you make it with absolute confidence? Ask me the same question. Ask me. No. I may try. It may work. I don't know. That's how many people's lives are. You tell them, how can you lead a man from point A to P? They say, well, I know. See, there is a level of persuasion I want you to get. Not just belief, persuasion. See how she just smiled about the cake thing. But if they ask you to, there are some of us, you've made it once, twice. Hallelujah. It wasn't bad, but you are not sure. Is that true? When I saw this guy snapping, and Oga John, I knew they knew what they were doing. Ask me to snap. All I know is to look at you and press that thing. Doesn't matter how it comes out. But these guys know something about perspective and angles and the rest. This is what I'm teaching you. Don't just enter the world blindly and hoping that things will change. There is a fierce world out there. Are you listening to me? You're not going to live in health by mistake. Please get this. Are you listening to me? Living in health is not a mistake. You're not going to be prosperous by mistake. One day you wake up and say, wow, so I made it. Mm -mm, it will never be by mistake. You're not going to know God by mistake. You won't have a glorious life and a ministry by mistake. You will not raise children after the fear of God by mistake. This thing of mistake or nemesis or if God wants it, he will do it. Stop that kind of language. It's not a good language. Say, if God really wants to bless me, after all, I didn't ask him for Jesus to die. So why would, if, wouldn't he freely give me all things? See, if you don't pay attention, you will be surprised. Is that true? Now, Hope, let me ask you. Was there a time you could make cake but not very well? What did you do? Did you train yourself? You went for catering school. Mrs. Kait, Abi. Now, listen. 
you went, you, she followed those who, with faith and patience, leaving some around going to PZ every time because she was determined. Is that true? Now, she can bake cake for wedding. Somebody will give her 50,000 overnight. Is that true? And somebody will say, ah, hope that the same, uh, our birthday is the same. No, it's not the issue of birthday. This is why people get angry at the success of their colleagues. Because they think life respects age. Ask Elihu. They say, ah, when did the uh, promise become successful like this? When the same koinonia, the same, in the same class, taught by the same teacher, somebody will get 100, somebody will get zero. Is that true? God bless you. Please sit down. If you pay attention, if you pay attention and you give it seriousness, I promise you, it's a guarantee. I promise you. You know what? I said this thing right from when we used to meet at the back of chapel. That we will be so successful and the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves. So that it will not be guesswork. You will know what you did. You know, when you ask a pretty lady, you say, I, I see how fine you're looking. What is response? You say, it's God. Bro. Yes, it's God. But let me explain to you. It's God. God gave grace. You took advantage of that grace. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. It's God that gives children. It's the woman that carries the gift. Correct? So that tomorrow, when you are blessed, it will not be a mistake. And the purpose of the blessing is to make others a blessing. That's why your blessing can never be by mistake. God will teach you the steps and you can guide somebody. Tomorrow, some of you, you are looking at me now. Some of you will be the ones on air. Presidents of nations will come to see the hand of God upon your life. And when they ask you, you will be talking to other people. When you see somebody sagging his jeans and laughing, say, look, for your own good, you better wash this childishness and sit down in one place. It's not the issue, oh, I can do both. It's the matter of the heart. Sit down and allow God to build you. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, we've been considering the su subject of success. I tell you, my spirit is fired up. Proverbs 18. We began two weeks ago by talking about the spiritual dimension of success. Give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Played the documentary and we thought, I told you that success is spiritual. Everything, life in itself is spiritual. Don't let secular humanists deceive and confuse you. Life is spiritual. Hallelujah. Then we considered the place of wisdom. The dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by studies. The dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by accumulation of experiences. Job said, this wisdom is not found in the land, in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk, still building on success. What do you have in your house? Proverbs 18. I want to share a powerful secret and I trust God that will pray. Proverbs 18 verse 16. Proverbs 16. Let's read together. You can look up. One to read. And bring it him before great men. One more time. Now, where a man is, put your name. Ready to read? One, two. Don't say my gift. My is not your name. This is English. One, two. Go again. Mean it from your heart now. One, two. Go. Father, bless your word tonight. In the name of Jesus. Give us understanding. Let the fruits of this teaching speak. Let it abide. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says the gift of a man can do what? 
The word make there is create. It can create space for him in life. And usher him. Can we get it from NIV? Or New Living Translation? Anyone? Ah, is, that's, that's, not, is that, that's not the version. That's a different. 1816. A gift does what? Is is not saying a gift like a bribe. No, just forget. It's not like a bribe. We are not talking of Nigeria here. Are you following me now? Because many of you, that's what you think I'm talking about. No, I'm not saying a gift like a seed. Huh? No, a gift. The gift of a man. It says what, my dear? It opens the way for who? Not the giver's friend. Not the giver's brother. It opens a way for what? And does what? And ushers him into the presence of it says the gift of a man. Whether there is space or not, the gift can push people and create space for him and usher him into the place of the great. A man's gift can make room. Have you ever heard people say no space? Have you heard that language? Sorry, no space. If there was space, it would have helped you. The Bible says a man's gift has the ability to push people and make space. Not only that, when other people are segregating, it can usher him to the place of the great. Hallelujah. It can usher him to the place of the great. Write it quickly. What is a gift? God-given abilities. God-given abilities. Your potentials. God-given abilities. That's simply what a gift is. Your God-given ability. The Bible says if you take it seriously... It can create space for you in life. This night, we're not just talking of gift. We're also talking of skill. What's your skill? Your learned abilities, acquired abilities. The difference between a gift and a skill is that one is God-given. It can only be developed. The other one can be learned. It can be acquired. Both of them have the capacity to bring you before great people. Say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of an interesting person called Joseph. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he had Joseph, by the way, please. Joseph was not a dreamer, for God's sake. Are you listening to me? Joseph was not a, there was nothing spectacular about the dreams of Joseph. As far as we know in the Bible, he had only two dreams. How many times have you had it? Have, have you dreamt? Are you a dreamer? So Joseph was not, his gift was not dreaming. His gift was the ability to interpret dreams. Are you following me now? So the Bible says that because of that ability, his brothers envied him. Many things happened. And then the Bible, I'm just rushing now. The Bible says when he was put, remember when, when um, Potiphar's wife and all her story, 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 let's just jump it. He found himself the prison is that true and the bible says when he found himself in the prison there was the wine presser and the baker but he realized that he had something is that true are you following me now when it was time for god to bless him god made the king to dream and close the heavens over the sorcerers and the magicians are you listening to me they got up in the morning and try to do their enchantment as usual. No way. Because it was time for God to bring a man into success. But God realized that a gift can open a way. What way? The way of the prison. Nothing else would have opened that way for Joseph. Because they were not planning to bring him out. Is that true? There are many people today. Who do not realize. That if they take advantage of the gift of God that is in them. It has the ability to take them from where they are. 
into realms that they never dreamt possible. And tonight, this is our prayer. We've been examining the principles of success. There is a dimension of success that only your gift can bring to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your gift. This dependency attitude of Nigerians is what has stopped them from exploring their gift. Ale, Ale Baka Musamu. Have you heard that statement? What is it in English? May God give you so that we will get. It's, it's a wrong concept of dependence. That's how many of us are waiting. Say, oh boy, just get work. Once you are there, just remember me. Your boy is there. Oh. See, let me tell you. If that is your mindset, you are going to suffer in this Nigeria. And in case you think you will run abroad, you will still suffer. There are still people, there are people under the bridge of every nation, true or false. Every nation in the world has, has bridge and there are people that sleep there. It's just that films don't carry it. There is ghetto everywhere, true or false. So, many of us have this escapism mind. You are just trying to get lottery and say, oh God, let this green American lottery just happen. They would go and see how many Nigerians live like, like outcasts abroad. Because they believe. I've told you, there is nowhere called greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. The Bible says, he makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Many people want to run to delta or rivers. Say, ah, oh yeah, we're coming to chop our share of the national cake. Go and find out how many poor people were born and bred in that same land. Are you listening to me? Everybody say, I have a gift. Say it, I have a gift. It can make room for me. It can take me from where I am to where God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Second Kings. Somebody is catching this thing and leaving some realms forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Catching this and leaving some realms forever. Hallelujah. Who would have known that comedians will be paid millions in Nigeria today? Look up please everybody. How many of you used to play football and you come back home and they've kept the cane to flog you? As soon as you are entering, there's a way you greet your father. He says, hey, you already know that this night. But today, that same football, are you listening to me? That same football has blessed people. Comedians, for heaven's sake, they won't come until you give them 2.5 million or 5 million to come and talk. They just crack a joke. Hallelujah. There are artists today. Artists today. Those who draw caricature for banks. They are paid millions of naira. Millions of naira. Listen. If you get what I'm teaching you this night. Something will happen in your life. Some of you it will happen instantly. young man called Gray Farah. Many of you know him. Gray Farah at age 10 was wondering what to do with his life. And he found out that he liked stones and he decided to start painting stones so that people will use it to just you know, just press their books and their doorposts. And people started looking at him and laughing. Every time people saw it, they just laughed. And they said, well, let's just help this small boy. Little did they know that that was a champion in the making. A time came, he started packaging those stones very well. At age 12, Grefara became a millionaire. At age 14, he was seated in the board of directors of 14 companies. Age 14. How old are you? Are you listening to me? I want you to know that if you take advantage of the gift, the gift of God is his seed in you that is supposed to help you enter the realm where you have influence and honor to legislate on behalf of heaven. Are you listening to me? Jeremiah Gyang, I've told you, Jeremiah Gyang used to be in Joss. That guy they call Jeremiah Gyang. 
Now, um, whether they are serving Satan or God is not the issue now. Are you listening to me? The issue is that the gifts were developed. You, you, get, you get the point? The guy you call M.I., I've said it, Jesse Jacks, were Sunday school mates. While all of us were looking at ladies, hey, pastor's daughter, this, those guys were building their potentials. Just like some of you were doing. You go to church, you won't sit down, you will use your offering money, buy ice cream, be playing ball at the back of the church. That's what you were doing. Whereas others were hearing the word and growing. See the difference right now. Are you listening to me? That these things have been perverted does not negate the fact that if they are gifts, they will still bring men to honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Second Kings 4. The story of an interesting woman. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet. So the, the person was the son of a prophet. Look at me. I want to tell you something. Maybe I'm going to create another controversy now this night. Listen. That your man of God or your spiritual father or mentor is anointed does not automatically guarantee that you will enter success. Did you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says this guy was the son of who? That means it does not respect anointing. Hmm. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest what thy servant, that thy servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is come to take my two sons to be slaves. And Elisha said to her, listen now. This woman was in a situation where she needed a miracle. Two of her children were going to go as slaves. Hallelujah. What did Elisha tell her? He said, what shall I do for you? And he asked a question. He said, tell me, what hast thou in thy house? What do you have where? In your house. And the Bible says, there is this treasure in this house, these earthen vessels. He said, what do you have? The woman had been running helter-skelter, running helter-skelter, and she met the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Could it be that many of you who have been running helter skelter or many families need to calm down and look at what you have in your house? I've learned by experience and by the word that the blessing of a man is always not far from him. It's just that there is no discernment to recognize it. Are you listening to me? Yes, the blessing of a man is always not far from him. Sometimes it's ridiculously close. You may not even know. There were many people who walked with Jesus, yet they were looking for miracles and until Jesus went to heaven, they were not blessed. Because they did not realize. Your miracle can be so close, you may not know. The Bible says, And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house except what? A pot of oil. You see how she didn't place value on it? The Bible says she said, Thy handmaid had what? Nothing. Nothing. That means this thing is not of worth, but just for the sake of answering you, let it be there. Thy handmaid had nothing. There are many of you that God has given you certain things and you have been calling it nothing. 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 The gift of a man. Whether it's a spiritual gift, is whatever kind of gift the Bible says the gift of a man can single handedly pick you where you are, take you out, and exalt you. It can, it can, I tell you, it can. Hallelujah. The man called Reinhard Bonke, he said he was considered by everybody to be a dollar, what people call a dollar, complete dollar, dollar IQ, low, everything low. But one day he discovered that there was the gift of God in his life. And today, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world celebrate this man. Called Reinhard Bonke. His name is synonymous to soul winning. Because he discovered the gift. And it created space for him among the great. It ushered him. When you are mentioning great people in history, you will mention him. Men who have done great things for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? 
In history, there's a woman called Mother Teresa. Didn't have the ability to heal the sick and do all of this, but she discovered that she had a gift in her. She refined it to a point that she gave it and gave her life and forever history will remember her. Are you hearing me? The gift of a man. I want you to know that there is an ability in you. Nobody here is a biological accident. I know you've been hearing it. Ah, your parents planned for four children and you are the fifth one. You just came. And every time they see you, they say, see, we didn't prepare for you. So you, you better know this thing. You are stubborn. No wonder we didn't prepare for you. And for some of us, these words have entered us. But I'm speaking to you tonight. That out of the six billion people in the earth, there is still space for those who are ready to make their... See, at the top, there is space. The congestion is always below. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you can pay the price to rise to the top, you will sit there and be wondering. 90% of the world's wealth is controlled by less than 10% of the world's population. And they left the remaining 10%. They spread it across and flung some in Africa and everybody is running like rats. Whereas somebody can arise. A man called Wole Soinka got up and looked and said, look, the boundaries of Africa will not stop me. He knew that he had something. See, I want you to be persuaded. Persuaded. It always does not look like it can make you great until you see the way men celebrate it. Matthew Ashimolo, hawk bread in this area. Some of our parents bought bread from him. While they were eating it, he was prophesying, Lord, the world will hear me. You say, I bring bread, 20 naira you take. Yet, this guy was moving. Within a short period of time, now he has commanded what we call apostolic territorial legislation. That's what he's doing in London. But acres and hectares of land that they would never give to a black person and he's legislating on behalf of heaven. A man called Sunday Adelaja, till date he does not speak fluently. He got up and went to a communist country, Ukraine, and stayed there. Led a part of those who led, right now he's among the fourth most influential people in that state. 80% of the people in his church are whites. He has led a revival and broken some barriers. Say after me, my gift. Say it, my gift will make room for me. Let me share with you a little story. They know about it years ago i went to a particular bank in this country to go and beg for loan i just entered promising i believe god spoke in tongues fasted prayed i got up you know there's a way they can look you see let me tell you people have be careful i'm warning you now in advance be careful the way you, you turn people down. Because let me tell you, it does not show. The Bible says, now it does not yet appear. Went to squat in my friend's house in Abuja. I got up, went to the bank, met them. Told them I was begging for loan. These people dribbled me, dribbled me, made a fool out of me, embarrassed me in the bank. I, didn't, I said, what is all this thing? And I laughed. I said, one day, they will call me. Are you hearing that? One day. What's the name of this guy that ran for second uh, vice president? Tunde Bakari. A bank came and met him and said, Sir, we are begging you to collect a loan of $10 million. We want to give you. No capital. The name of the capital is human capital. Do you know what human capital is? You and your reputation is what will be a, a collateral. So banks are looking for Dangote and looking for this. And then some of you run there and they say, get out of this place. We are looking for people who have used their gifts. Tell yourself, no man will mock your God in your lifetime. This is what has happened to some of you. You see your father stand, no rent. And the landlord will stand and Blast all of you. Blast you. Say, look at you. Pretty for nothing. Eh? 
You are all these kind of Nigerian people. Just laugh and say you will invite him when you are cutting the scissors of the duplex you are building for your parents. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. The gift of a man makes room for him. I'm speaking to some of you. Some of you think, don't just think I'm motivating you. I'm speaking to your spirit. I told myself I will never go anywhere where anybody will look and I'll have to chicken out and hide myself. I have something. I have something. I have something. When you find it, it so happens that God carved your own like your fingerprints. God is not a fool. He will not put competition around. He gave you your uniqueness. What is your uniqueness? When you know your uniqueness and you are persuaded about it, you found your secret of glory in life. Did I do something here? I think I've done something. Did, was it me? Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have seen people in this life that years ago, they would look at me. They wouldn't, some of them, <laughs> let me tell you something. Ah, life. Somebody who will be driving you today, tomorrow will be the one who it will be the honor. I've gone to homes that I went years ago. Years ago. They were looking at me like some of these are serious people. But now, when they hear you are coming, it's as if God is coming. Say, say after me, the gift of a man. Yes. The gift of a man makes room for him makes room. The brothers of Joseph did not realize his gift. They didn't know it would be an honor one day for them to see their own brother. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One time they went and suddenly they found out that their brother was now the prime minister in Egypt. Could it be that some of you who are sitting down today, somebody who has looked at you and said, Tolu, one day the person will say, Tolu, please talk to XYZ for us. May God make you a wonder. May God stop you from being small. What is that gift? What is that gift? For some of you is wisdom. When you think of Benihin, you think of the healing anointing. When you think of Ora Roberts, you think of healing. When you think of JJ Okocha, you think of football. Mark Zuckerberg, you think of IT. What is your uniqueness? Define what makes you different. That's what the world will pay for. What makes you different? The greatness is not in your similarity. The greatness is in your difference. When you master your difference, you will exchange it for honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The world is full of people. What is your difference from others? Do you know it? Do you even believe it? There are many musicians in this country equally anointed. But when you call Sinach, there is a there is a, a carving. She has carved a brand for herself. When you mention Frank Edwards, they, they not only discovered their gifts, they discovered what was unique about that gift. That's what makes you priceless. When you discover that gift, you will know that you are not one of the many people roaming around the earth. Oh, there is something about your life. You may be in the same class. You may be in the same office. But let me tell you, you are not the same. You are not the same. You may be doing ministry. Everybody is doing prophetic ministry. Everybody is doing apostolic ministry. Everybody is doing evangelical ministry. What is it about yours? What is it about yours? Every great man in life not only discovered his or her gift, but the uniqueness about that gift. What is your uniqueness? What makes you stand out from the rest? I'm asking you, and God is asking you. What makes you stand out from the remaining people? Listen, when you find your gifts, the next step is to begin to refine it. This is the hardest part. Because your gift at its default state is not good enough to make you marketable. Did you hear what I'm saying? Refine yourself. Build 
Cleanse yourself. A lot of us don't do this. Christians are very, very, very lazy people. You know what made us lazy? The fact that there is something called the favor of God. There is something called the wealth of the wicked that will be transferred to the righteous. And people just say, my wealth, come, find your way into my pocket. And look, let me tell you, people have been confessing that thing from the day you were born. And they thought it just works like that till today it has not come. When the Bible says the wealth of the wicked, people just, people just, just craft that thing and pick out what they want. The wealth of the wicked will come into the Bible says God give it to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and he said to the unbeliever he give it to heap and to travail so that he will bring it it is your wisdom hallelujah what is your gift what is your uniqueness what makes you stand out what makes you stand out among all of the graduates in Nigeria what do you think will make you get a job what do you think will make you become a ceo what do you think will make you become an uncommon i preached a message extra what did i what extraordinary anointing what makes you extraordinary hallelujah what makes you extraordinary it's not your place of birth it's not even whether you are from a royal family or not What makes you different from other people? If I write a book today, what is the difference between my book and that of David Biome or that of Bishop Oyedeko or that of Paul Enenche? What is the difference? Many of you like doing the same things. That's why you are not moving anywhere. This helps a lot of people. We like, we think it will work because you are doing copy and paste. There is beauty in being unique. Are you listening? There are even, even among bad people, there are some armed robbers that are notable because they were unique. Their degree and strategy of armed robbery was so touching. They said, no, I won't steal like the rest. This thing is common. There is a strategy. This follow, follow attitude is good to follow people, but you must follow with wisdom. Many of you, every time God is telling you move left and you see a crowd moving right, you think you are wrong. A whole nation can be wrong. That a thing is popular does not mean it is right. The path of greatness is a lonely path. Few people follow it. That's why you will not find many people. You will think you are making a mistake. Wait until you arrive there. Everybody will turn and say, ah, I need pastors in that journey. Hallelujah. What is your gift? Do you realize that if you take that gift, some of us is plotting, just plotting. Do you know that if the Lord anoints it and wisdom comes upon that gift, you will be able to establish something that will make you so influential you can legislate for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? A lot of people say, Billy Graham, all the presidents go to greet him. But what people do not know is that it was part of his life's goal. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. His, he really didn't believe his gift was just normal evangelism. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. He sent them hundreds of telegrams again and again. They kept bouncing him. He didn't stop. What you see or what you have seen is the reward of many years. There are some of you, God has spoken a lot of things. God has told you. Some of you will own banks. Some of you will own corporations. Hallelujah. You started selling recharge card, nothing happened. People just say, and you know believers have this ugly way. Once you start something, nobody buys it. They say, oh God, leave this thing. Oh, if God is in it, speed will come, favor will come. It is lack of the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. You can never know success until you know failure. In the school of greatness, your greatest asset is your failure. Are you listening to me? Are you following me? I'm teaching you something very powerful. My gift can make room for me. 
my gift can make room for me. Worshipped him. Wrote him means rehearsing all the time. Hallelujah. He's been with us for years. We've, we've gone, every, I know how much he has his money because he believes. This is, a, this is a master student. I think he should have rounded up his masters. But he just believes that there is something upon this. And he's taking it all the way. Tomorrow, presidents will call him and he will just be playing. And they will sign checks of millions and you'll be wondering and saying, ah, ah. Just keyboard, you you play your own as you are playing. They just they point, they will even talk to you. They'll just say this way: go out. Those who do decoration, do you know there are those who do decoration for presidential figures? There's this guy called Yam Yal Yam Press. Joda, what's his name? I, I heard that he was in Zaria here. Is that true? Now he got up with his publishing, and today he has become a multi-millionaire. Yet, there were others who started before him. This afternoon, we went to pray for um, one of our ladies' father and she can. While we were passing somewhere, we saw this. I mean, we we're talking about people who were pushing, who used to push wheelbarrow. Jakes was saying, ah, this wheelbarrow business used to sell before. And we we're talking. And then Wale pointed one man's shop and said, this man, it was by pushing that wheelbarrow. Right now, he has one of the largest shops. Say, I will not let men despise my gift. Say it. Many of you have stopped developing your gift because you have been lied to. Some of you can cook and all you can cook is Amala. And you, you have a dream of having somewhere just Amala people love as a you self. Abba. You want to disgrace the world. See, greatness lies in the bosom of those who can go the extra mile with their gifts. Refuse to let men talk you down. It's better to take a step and fail honorably. They will clap for you. The one who tried and failed is better than the one who didn't try and is just making noise. Oh, pass the ball to number five. Ah, you would have just passed that thing now if you are taking that penalty this way. Look at simple penalty. See you, see goalkeeper. Talk is cheap. Somebody is sweating in the field for 90 minutes. Somebody else is talking. Say if it was me, that thing, the way he did it like you, that he would have been a goal now. That's how many people in life are. How can a graduate not get a job? How can blah, 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 and they're not doing anything? You're in 200 level, your lecturer told you, ah, you're a nice student. See, I cannot understand why graduates are not getting jobs. Then you finish and carry your CV to the same man that commended you. <laughs> and he says, get out of my office. You're like, ah, ah. Say after me, my gift will make room for me. Say my gift will make me great. Say one more time, my gift will make me great. Yes. Some of you are architects. You are good but not very good. And God is telling you, refine that gift. One day you will get, let me tell you something. Once you can provide solution, nobody cares about your age or what you can do or who, are you hearing me? The gift of a man defies race and age and anything. Once you see people discriminating you, your gift is not notable enough. When your gift is notable enough, you will break every kind of barrier. Hallelujah. What do you have in your house? And the woman said, nothing. Probably somebody said, me, I can just make people laugh. That's my own. Everybody calls me a dollar. Zero in math, zero in English, P in social, uh, uh, you know, just anything, literature. But you can speak small. At least make people laugh. Why don't you say, Lord, if you can use this. This is what Reinhard Bonke said. He said, Lord, if you can use this, then use me. Do you know your beauty too is a gift? Hello? There are cynical guys that anytime they see a pretty lady, they are just angry. Why? I don't know. Say, Look, don't think because you are beautiful in this place. Beauty is nothing. It's a lie. Beauty is something. Beauty is a gift. The book of Esther, there was no pastor, no prophet, no thing, just a beautiful woman. She was the ambassador of God. Many of you feel guilty for being fine as if you gave back to yourself. It has happened. It has happened. Cherish it. Build 
put it and use it for the glory of God. Don't use it to go to men in TJ Palace. Tell yourself this beauty. Could it be that God will make you marry the minister of finance? So that when you are there as Esther, when they want to cut corners, you say, uh -uh. Do you believe this? I want you to be wealthy. I want you to be blessed. Don't let anybody fool you that money will take you to hell. It's not true. Money only amplifies what you are. If you are a thief, money will make you a bigger thief. If you are, if you are immoral, money will give you more options. You can now rent a bigger hotel. If you love God and have a desire to advance his kingdom, money will make you do that better. You will build roads. You will build schools. When I went to Sheik, I was sharing with them. I said one of my dreams in life is to have a very big hospital. This is why you need to be successful. Say, I will be successful. Don't feel guilty about it. Say it. Say, I'll be rich. I'll be blessed for the kingdom. Yes. Can you give God your beauty? Yes, I have nothing but everybody keeps telling me I'm a pretty person. Why don't you bring it and say, Lord, you can use this. Anoint it. Let this beauty make room for me. And take me to a place where I'm in a position of influence to legislate for the kingdom. Some of you are very intelligent. People are sweating, reading overnight. You wake up that morning, one hour to the exam and browse and get A. You think it's ordinary. It's an ability of God. Why don't you stretch it through and say, I will get to a position where I will do great things. When they make me a vice chancellor because of my academic prowess. I will now legislate on behalf of heaven. When they bring the names of people who don't qualify, we kick them out and say, no, this person may be poor, but he deserves a chance. Give him a chance. Are you listening to me? Some of you will put scholarships for less privilege. Some of you will name it after your accomplishments. You will be so great, they will name a foundation after you. Joshua Selman Foundation. look it will happen the beauty of success is that it depends on you and God it will happen it will happen you know how many women have named their children Joshua look at how long Matthew's son name is Ashimo Lowo. the whole world is calling it they have never complained that it's too long when you become great when you become great in life when you become great in life i watched a dvd of apostle johnson suleiman he went for a crusade when he came down i saw how the god they interviewed him in cnn for 12 minutes nobody will say you are a nigerian or you are an african no listen are you going to remain where you are are you not seeing your family members crying? Is it not obvious that they need a savior? How many of you have seen your father come under pressure? No rent, no nothing. What are you doing about it? I told myself I'll come to a point in my life where I'll put all my family members on perpetual salary for their lifetime till they go to be with Jesus Christ. Brothers, how would you like that kind of thing? If wishes were horses, beggars would beg to ride, but wishes are not horses. But you can turn that wish into a horse by applying these principles I'm teaching you and you will ride on it gloriously. What do you have in your house? This is what God is asking you. What do you have? What do you have in your house? Don't sit down and be admiring great people and say, hey, lucky for them, oh, you people have gone. do pray for us. Say, I'm going to do something. Say it. If you know your uniqueness, how many books are you reading? How many books? How many books are you reading? Readers are leaders. How many books are you reading in the area of your call? If you are snapping this camera, if you cannot mention 
five people in this country that are good or around i know you are not serious are you hearing what i'm saying you is that god is calling me into a healing ministry show me whose dvds you have who god has called into that healing ministry where you are you are reading how they started when you go to my house you don't find okay there's there, there are two movies now they did the lord of the ring is still there then this tyler perry's film menace no? I can't remember again. I can't even remember the name. But there are people that have modeled what I see God making me become. And I sit down. I study. I want to empower God's people. I want to make them ambassadors. Set them on fire. Do you have a unique grace? Do you have a unique gift? Are you doing anything about it? Some of you just sit down and keep pitying yourself. And disturbing those who are moving towards their destiny. Try this life self. Now, wow, if we were abroad by 18 years, they would have given us this. If you, listen, I'm not laughing this night. If you don't stop that attitude, you will find that you are 50 years and you are still talking like that. Now, you know there are some people who believe it's just nemesis. That's just how life is for us. Nothing used to work in our family. My sister too is like that. No job, no marriage. Me, ma'am, like that. No job, no marriage. As if you do not know that you can change it. You go to a place of employment, they kick you out, laugh, and say one day we will drink tea with the CEO of this company. We went to Shika and one, one, one man just stopped us. One guard man that is trying, where well, he was doing his job, the guy stopped us and said, we are not going anywhere. We were trying to plead him. He said, we are not going anywhere. And Shade's husband is like the ogre of the whole, you know, the security company that employs the people. So I called Shade. I said, Todd, they've stopped us. So wanted to go and pray for her father. And she was just happy. She just got one bigger guy. The guy just marched and came. When they came, at once they allowed us and we waved the man and we left. Be careful what you call impossible because somebody will come and make it possible. Would have, there were some people who were waiting there. But when Chade's husband came, he saluted him and we were happy. We were partakers of the glory. <laughs> it taught me a lesson. It taught me a powerful lesson. Impossible is a relative statement. They can close the door for others and say, sorry, it cannot be opened. Sorry, it cannot be opened. You will be amazed to see how they will open it for somebody. I told you there are some people that bank on Saturdays and Sundays too. Is that true? It's only for the masses that bank ends 3 p.m. on Friday. They say, oh yeah, go out, let's lock this bank. But there are people on Sunday because of one man, they'll open the bank and say, Your Excellency, sir, please. Come in. We went to Starcoms and I saw one account officer sitting there. Why will a bank give an account officer to come and sit in a, in, a, in a telecommunications company? Some of you, you will have in your own house. You say, so how much are we sending for this school now? Send 10 million for this school, 10 million for this one, 50 million for this. I hear that there is a church building. Send 15 million for it. God punish the devil. Let me talk like, doc <laughs> Let me talk like Dr. Abel Damina. He likes it. God punish the devil. Say, I will be great in life. I'm inspiring you tonight. This was the decision I made years ago. Let me tell you the truth. This decision will cost you something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you willing to pay the price? The woman said, nothing except a little cruise of oil. What did the prophet tell her? He said, go and borrow. You, you are not permitted to borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. What are vessels? Books. DVDs experiences sit down under the feet of mentors and great people that have gone ahead and listen i've told you this attitude of saying we are all equal we are equal in christ but when it comes to the school of greatness wisdom is ability to recognize difference there are people i will never no matter how crazy i am i will never if i ever get to a meeting and they are seated there i must salute and recognize them before speaking wisdom mike modok says is the ability to recognize difference many of you don't know difference at all hallelujah
Doctors don't go about looking for sick patients. They establish an institution and say, if you are sick, find your way here. Is that true? If you really want to be treated, what will you do? You have to go to the hospital. Is that true? Many of us want the doctors to come and find us and treat us. Sorry, life does not work like that. Get up and begin to do something about your life. Make up your mind. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm awake. How can a young man be sleeping by 10, 11, 12? You yawn by 12 when others are already writing their names in time. And you, you wonder why things will not work for you. Let me tell you, God is a merciful God, but he's a just God. I know the number of times I sleep in a day. I'm always building myself. Nobody will deceive me compared to where I'm going. This is just a step out of the cave. Are you listening to me? This is rehearsals. I tell people, ministry has not started yet. When we get to that level of kingdom influence, where we will not talk too much, at that time I won't be shouting like this again. It's when you don't have results, you shout too much. Charles and Francis Hunter say one miracle is worth a thousand words. If Michael Jackson only said, Jesus is Lord. That statement with that level of influence will bring more harvest than what we'll be doing every week in Zaria here for one year. Is that true? Everybody say influence. This is what your gift. Let me tell you very quickly before we pray. What your gift can do for you. Number one. Your gift and your skills when refined and developed will create opportunities. Everybody say opportunities. Your gift, your skill. When refined, when developed, my friend, a military man, took me to a place in Abuja. When I entered that place, is a is a spa place, a beauty place. They took me there to bath me. Ah! When I entered that place, I knew that there was difference between clipper and clipper, barbing saloon and barbing saloon, barbers and barbers. The way they treated me when I sat down and they barbed me. In my mind, I was saying, is this me? Hallelujah. When they finished, they put a lotion. I don't know what it is. My head just foamed like Father Christmas. And they told me, enter this room. I entered. I was enjoying. I don't care what it is. I don't need to know. I will employ somebody who knows when I'm blessed. Hallelujah. And when they washed my head and I finished, they appreciated me. Ah! I said, what kind of place is this? And they showed me the owner, a Lebanese woman who was also walking quietly. Nobody even knew. When we finished everything, time came for bill. It said 600 naira. For barbing, That's what you will pay when you meet someone who has refined his gifts. The same food, a cup of coffee in Transcorp Hilton is 2005. Everybody say cup of coffee. How much is coffee? Nescafe, this type they shake there. How much? 15 naira. If you price 20 naira. Yet it's the same thing you pay. This decoration you are seeing. There are people who can decorate over 2 million, some even 5 million. You will name your price by your refining of your gifts. Write it, your gift and your skill will create opportunities. If Rotimi continues this a day, see, how the opportunity will come is none of your business. Just know it will come. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, or how bones are formed in the womb of how a child. So also you do not know the way of God. How it will happen is none of your business. Hallelujah. One of my uncles called me. My father's friend. Years ago when they come to our house. We are the ones who run to go and wash the car. How are you? We go and wash. I said no problem. I will wash it. He called me of recent and said, ah, ah, I've been hearing a lot. We are seeing the things you are doing. I said, bless God. Oh. He 
said, when will you come now? We need to discuss. There's something we need to sit down man to man. I said, that's right. <laughs> when, when your father starts talking to you like that, it's a sign that you are making progress. When your father says, there are some things I want to discuss with you, but I, when, let everybody sleep. Come out. Clap for yourself. You are trying. That's, that's a sign. When your father says, look, there are some secrets we don't tell people. Who are the people? When your gifts start showing, there are doors that will start opening. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of you, you think you are too young to enter some doors. No, sir. No, ma. If you, if you refine yourself, I promise you that door will open. There are places I've entered today by the grace of God. I know there is no human way under the sun under the sun that I will enter that place. Hallelujah, I have a gift. Laugh at me, the gift is in me. You'll never go out. God gave it to me. The way God did it, God put the gift. The only way to enjoy the gift is to carry me along with the gift. You can't carry the gift and leave me. There are people today, if the gift of God was not in my life, they will see me and just his and pass. But God orchestrated it. You must need me because you need that gift. Oh, I celebrate his name. That's why I rejoice. Such as I have. Go and borrow vessels. This is what the prophet said. Sister, borrow vessels. Read the books. You may, if you borrow vessels, the gift will expand. The oil was there. The problem was there was no vessel. Esther was beautiful, but her beauty was not yet sufficient to take her to the king's palace. Is that true? She was beautiful. Many of you are sitting on gifts today that you are paying for. During my birthday, the things that people brought for me, it was as if it was wedding. You know how they finish wedding and you pack the gifts. I just sat down. I said, yes, ago, I did my birthday alone. Ah, somebody is after two weeks. You say, ah, is it not your birthday? Your birthday 25th, is it not? Am I wrong? Say you are right. Oh, say, oh, happy birthday. But there is something that can happen. One year before your birthday, somebody is preparing because of your gift. Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God telling tonight that if you can pay attention, we are discussing on the subject of success. Some of you have been sitting on treasure. You are in the middle of an ocean begging for water. You are in the middle of an ocean. You are an artist. You are watching on TV drawings that are not half your capacity. They are rewarding the people whereas you are there. When I watch preachers on TV preach, I tell you with all humility, I just get up and I rejoice. I say, God, you tried for me. We're on our way coming. And I get up, I rejoice. I say, Lord, I may not know everything, but at least I know something. I know something that I can preach anywhere and not be ashamed. Come on now. Some of you, the business acumen that you have, even the CEOs of banks and cooperatives do not have. Listen, that you have not entered that place does not mean you don't have it. Who would have known that Zuckerberg's gift was so good like this? It takes time to prove it. But that does not mean it's not there. Some of our worshippers, some of these people you are seeing, the gifts that they have, you will see them tomorrow and say, I know this person. I know that person. Abel Damina was born in Samina Kahir. Right here in this area. Who cares where I was born now? Who cares where I was raised? Even if it was with firewood we used to prepare and cook. It's, 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 look, when you are blessed, you are blessed. When you know it, you have known it. If it opens the door, it will open the door forever. It will open the door this week and close it next week. Say, I have a solution for the world. Say it, I have a solution. Some of you are music groups. Some of you are individuals. Who has talked you down? I'm speaking to somebody this night. Who has talked you down? Somebody ate your food and said, God forbid, if your restaurant is the only one, I will just, let me, I will learn how to cook by myself. Allow the person. Who has talked you down? I want you to know tonight, 
that the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit of creativity. Bel Bezalel. That spirit came upon him and he was given the mission of crafting. I'm speaking to you. Who has talked you down, my brother? Who has talked you down? See, many of you see us today and you think we were born this way. Wait till you hear some stories. When you see great people, you think they had opportunities to just climb. Let me tell you, it's not true. You don't want to know the things they have survived. Greatness lies in the bosom of those who have survived what others cannot survive. I don't care what you think you are going through. I, I slept on speakers and amplifier. It will never happen again forever. There were days we did not eat. There were days we trekked distances. But we did not allow what happened to us. I, there was a day I trekked from the roundabout where Chiki Republic. I passed Chiki Republic. I was hungry. I could not do anything about it. I trekked from there to aviation. What have you gone through that you think is stopping you? Some of you is complex. Just inferiority complex. Every time you want to rise, the devil keeps telling you, you know you did this, you know you are this, you know you are that. We are here tonight to call that devil a liar. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are calling that devil a liar. There are some of you that the gift God has given you is a supernatural prophetic grace. Some of you is an apostolic ability. Every time in your dreams you see the whole world. Some of you are book writers that will write on common books. The gift of a man. He said, borrow vessels. When she borrowed the vessels, she entered. He said, lock your door. There are some trainings you don't do in the open. You must close your door. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you that like open, there are some times you need to close your door. Because what God will do in you is only him that can do alone. You will close your door. And she began to pour it. Do you know how, how many vessels? The pain it took for her to carry the vessels. While she was carrying the vessels, she said, I'm on, I'm on my way out. Never, never to be in this situation again. You are the solution to the prayer of your families. Some of you, many of them never experienced some things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But could it be that God brought you tonight to speak to you? There are some of you who have been saying, oh, the government is not giving job, this and that. Could it be that God is trying to speak to you? I'm challenging you. Take what I'm saying seriously because we are going to pray. We will soon rise up to pray. And when it's time to pray, I want you to pray your life out. I told myself I am great. I'm great. I'm great. Joshua Selman, you are great. I speak it to myself every day. The world will hear you. You are a sign and a wonder. The anointing that is upon you is not common. Don't trivialize it. Give God thanks but celebrate it. If it's common, go and get it in the market. Hallelujah. The gift that God has given you, Oga John, there are photographers around, but it's not common. Believe it and take it seriously. There are some of you that have all kinds of gifts. You are administrators, uncommon administrators. As young as you are, you can sit down and administrate. You didn't read this at me. Could that gift take you? There are some of you who can write proposals. There are many of you who can do a lot of things. I'm speaking to you tonight. Wake up. Call your name and say, wake up. One to go. See, prophesy it from the spirit. One more time. One to go. Yes, the Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest. That means you have been sleeping. Awake thou that sleepest. And Christ will give you life. Somebody called me and said, Josh, at, at this level of your life, what are you doing? I said, preparing for an extraordinary life. This is what I'm doing right now. This is what I do every day. When people get up and run, everybody is going for work, everybody is doing, I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. Oh, and when the master is done with me, he will present me as a masterpiece, a symbol of his wisdom and artistry. I speak to you. 
you will hear this message many years after now. When you stand and watch the world clap for you and tears stream down your face, you will tell them, this award is given to me in London, but I was trained in Zaria. And I did not despise the chastening of the Lord. Many of you, this teaching is hard on you. It's a wake-up call, but despise not the days of chastening. I bring you a word. Let the devil not lie to you. You are great. You are on your way to happen. I don't care how many times you have failed in life. When you become successful, when a woman has a miscarriage 50 times and she gives birth the 51st time, nobody will ask her how many times you had miscarriage. We don't care. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I am somebody. I am somebody. I am somebody. I had that song years ago. We went to sing in a church. And while they were singing it, they were laughing. That song entered my spirit till today. Tell yourself, I am somebody. It's time to stop this false humility and start believing in what God, this is what koinonia is all about. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Partnership with him to shake the world. I would never, if, if I tell myself I am not great, I'm lying. It's not humility, it's foolishness. Say, I am great. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say the world will testify that I am great. Say the world will testify that I am great. Say I will walk at it. I may cry but I will walk at it. It will cost me but I will walk at it. Understanding. You are paying the price. Some of you will be mighty women of God. As you are looking at me. You, you, God has already shown you. It does, you are, you are wondering, how shall these things be like Mary? He said, thou art favored, thou, how did he even put it, that salutation? Hail Mary, mother of grace. He said, thou art favored among other women. She said, what meaneth these salutations? How shall these things be? Don't, you don't need to ask how it shall be. Let me tell you, whether you are a mother here, whether you are a father, whether you are a sister, a brother, young or old, at any level, if you can allow God to take a hold, I have found my servant David. And with my holy oil, I have anointed him. What has God given you? I'm speaking to you. What has God given you? Oh, God has given you leadership. Take it to the extreme. Let that gift make room for you. God has given you grace for ministry. Take it to the extreme. God has given you business acumen. Stand up and establish those conglomerates. Don't let no devil talk nonsense to you. Let the employment of Nigeria not threaten you. Tell yourself I will arise. I will create jobs. Thousands of jobs. You can be a lady and God is telling you. You are entering into the finance world. Don't sit down and let people call you a weaker vessel. It's time to begin to silence those demonic voices. You've never held 10,000 of your money, so what? Your gift will bring for you something your entire family did not hold. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Everybody close your eyes just in one minute before we pray. Close your eyes where you are. And just begin to meditate in one minute. I'd like you to begin to see yourself the champion that God has made you. I'd like you to begin to see yourself solving the problems of mankind. You are an ambassador. See yourself shaking away the limitation of your culture. See yourself shaking away that limitation. Who told you you cannot get there? I'm speaking to your spirit. Just close your eyes and meditate. I have found my servant David. I have a gift. I have an ability given by God. I have an ability. Men may not understand it now. Men may not understand it now. It's still in the process of refining. It's still in the process of refining. 
but when God is done with you my sister I tell you although you cannot speak good English now I am telling you when that gift is done you will stand near scholars and it will be an honor for them to stand with you yes I know you came from the village yes I know you came from the village you've not afforded a good meal but who told you that gift cannot take you I'm speaking to you yes you have not gotten admission you wrote jam 20 times but who told you that gift cannot rise up i'm speaking to you yes your wire didn't work well yes you started that business and failed but who told you that anointing is not in you oh yes it is yes it is yes it is i don't care what has happened yes it is who told you that that anointing the first day you prayed for a sick person the person was not healed in fact he died but God told you you have been called to take his healing power to the nations. Do you believe it? There are many of you that are, are TV hosts. God is taking you to do mighty things. Some of you are beauticians. Some of you are mighty men and women. Joshua the high priest stood before God. And Satan was there to accuse him. And he said, Satan, is this not a reed that I've taken out of fire? The Lord rebuke you. At any level you can start. Hear me tonight. I'm speaking to you. At any level you can start. Joseph. In one night. He slept. As an ordinary slave. He woke up the next day. And his gift made room for him. Somebody's gift will make room for him. Rise up on your feet. Now, in the next five to ten minutes, please, if you want to scatter yourself around, I want you to pray. Let me tell you, if I, if I say prayer and I see some of you looking at me, I'll come and hold your hands and pray with you here. Please, if you are sleeping, wake up. We are finished. Wake up. It's time to pray. Inside and outside. There's no space for you inside. Go outside to pray. I want us to pray. The Bible says... This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy. Many of, some of you don't know these giftings. You are going to pray and say, Lord, what did you put in me? What did you put in me? I'm tired of inferiority and complex. I'm tired of being thought out of as a second class person. What did you put in me for your glory? That's prayer point number one. Lift your voice right now and begin to pray. Come on now, Koinonia, you won't pray like this. You won't pray like this. Shekataba kata prakata bela de bokoso pata. Shekata prakata prakata bokoso pakata. Ma prakata pakata. Lord, what is that treasure? What do I have in my house? Shekete kete bokoto pada pa. Young and old, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Sekete prekete ke pekete ke topo kosopata. Rekete proske pai maka prakata le koto proske bariata a proko tope kete pekete banaba. Make sure you are praying. Lord, what is that gift? What is the rod of God in my hand? I'm tired of trying to look like everybody. I'm tired of trying to talk like everybody. Koinonia, pray. Shekete te kosopeka. Shebrekete ke posha. Rekete proskope e kotoriata. Mambro to zekete. Rekete posa. Lord, show me my uniqueness. Show me. He said, call unto me. And I will answer. I will show you. I will show you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. Come on, Koinonia, pray. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh God. My father did not see it. My mother did not see it. Show me, oh God. There is a generation waiting for a revelation 
of the glory of God that is in me. Kapate prekete koto prekete. Pray, pray. You came here tonight to pray. What do you have in your house? What do you have? Where is that ability that can make you stand anywhere? That will also give you a seat among the great. Koinonia, pray. I don't like the way some of you are praying. Come on, pray. Contend in the spirit. Every power of darkness that wants you not to discover that gift in you, the Lord rebuke it. Pray. It will come out. It will come out. It will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Forget about where you are now. Forget about where you are today. Forget about what you don't have. Forget about what has happened. Pray. Pray. Invest into your tomorrow. Invest into your tomorrow. What is it, oh God? I call unto you. He said, call unto me. I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. He will show you in a dream. He will show you in a vision. He will show you through prophetic confirmation. He will show you through your passion. He will show you through your desires. Show me, O God, show me, O God, the gift that will end poverty in my lineage. Show me that gift that will end poverty. Show me that gift that will bring my family to greatness. Show me that gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to speak and say, Lord, I receive a baptism of diligence to refine and develop my gifts. Are you hearing me? Some of us hear me. Some of us, you need to reduce your time of pointless visitations going to go and meet friends and gossiping and discussing about things that have no bearing to your future are you hearing me you're going to see whether it is in the rain in the sun you're going to tell yourself i may cry i may weep i may not look fine now as i'm doing it but i'm ready hear me some of you by this prayer you will need to cut away from godless and unserious friends well, hold on i'm speaking to some of you because for some of you it is your friends and your company that are keeping you from being great your this friend thing love is a command association is not there's nobody that says you must have many friends to show you are making progress in life they may gossip about you they may misunderstand you don't worry when you become great it will settle the matter are you hearing me you are going to pray now and say, Lord, diligence. The Bible says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall not stand before mean men. He shall stand before kings. Lift your voice and pray. Diligence to fast. Diligence to pray. Diligence to study. Day and night. Diligence to read books. Diligence to listen to tapes. Diligence to go for workshops. 
Keto Beketosa Rekoto Leke Prosketia. I receive a baptism, a fresh baptism, a fresh baptism, a fresh baptism. Are you praying, Koinonia? Are you praying? Leke teke teke lebosh, leke pro seke te lebosh, ma pro sko seke te bosh, reke te lekosia. Pray. Say I break free from ungodly movies, ungodly associations, ungodly places for the sake of my destiny. I pay the price. I pay the price. I saw the seed. I may weep, but I saw the seed. I can't be a failure in life. Rekete koto prekete bolo suba, rekete proskete keleba, ambre kotoshka rakata leko sopa. Yes, you are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to prosperity. You are praying your way to generational blessings. You are praying your way to extraordinary impact. My sister, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Haleka prosekete. Forget about your failures and pray. Forget about your failures and pray. Say, Lord, I will start again. I used to set goals before, but now I'm backsliding. I used to watch videos every day. I used to listen to DVDs, but now I'm backsliding. But tonight, tonight, a baptism, fresh grace. I won't give up. I won't give up. Come on now. Arise. Let your dreams arise. Refuse to give up. God is faithful. Refuse to give up. Go back again. Do it again. Shake it up. You are laboring in the spirit. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Last prayer point for this night. Listen. Hear me. The last prayer point. You are going to pray. We just have about two more minutes left. You are going to pray. And send dangerous prophecies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to prophesy. And tell yourself that top is for me. No devil will stop me. That top is a position God has prophesied over my life from his word lift your voice and pray I'm meant for the top meant for the top meant for the top in business the top in leadership the top in music the top prophesy to yourself an extraordinary academian an extraordinary worshiper, extraordinary musician, extraordinary media giant, extraordinary business mogul, extraordinary apostle, extraordinary prophet, extraordinary evangelist. Pray! Nigeria, open up! Open up! My gift is bringing me. Abuja, open up. Lagos, open up. Port Harcourt, open up. Kano, open up. Joss, open up. London, open up. Israel, open up. China, open up. My gift is making room. Prophesy, my gift is making room. 
labor market open up nigerian labor market open up your gift your gift gospel music industry open up generals are coming generals are coming doors of ministry open up miracle workers are coming fiery apostles are coming fiery prophets are coming nigeria open up ladies of excellence are coming women of virtues are coming the borders are coming nigeria open up our ladies are coming they are coming with the spirit of elijah they are coming entrepreneurs business giants business giants billionaire philanthropists healing ministers miracle workers reformers pray pray i'm coming i'm on my way nothing will stop me pain will not stop me persecution will not stop me criticism will not stop me discouragement will not stop me failure will not stop me i'm on my way there is a prophecy there is a prophecy i wore a good warfare one more minute prophesy my gift is making room it's making room hallelujah hallelujah koinonia hear me your gift is making room for you are you hearing what i'm saying lift your hands i want to prophesy to your life i want you to receive it with all your heart i prophesy that these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever i declare that for those of you who do not know what that gift and that uniqueness is this night this night this night may the angel of the lord visit you in dreams in visions receive dreams receive visions receive dreams receive visions let your eyes be open hallelujah i pray for those of you who are suffering from any kind of discouragement or laziness mental laziness spiritual laziness physical laziness and you don't have grace to develop your gifts this night i pray that a fresh fire a fresh baptism will fire you for diligence receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus fresh fire for diligence grace to read books grace to stay awake in the night grace to study principles hear me hear me those of you who have been talked down to those of you who they've told you you have failed in one way or the other or all kinds of things have made you feel inferior you are afraid to try i pray for you now this night in the name that is above all names receive grace to take steps take action over that business take action over that job submit the cv apply again apply again write the jam again apply again I pray for some of you who 
you are the only ones that are visionary in your family and it's bringing a lot of persecution people don't know what you are they don't even know that it's for their own good every time they castigate you i pray right now in the name that is above all names that devil that wants to orchestrate an event to discourage you right now this night lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted all ye ancient doors i command that devil to be silenced in the name of jesus hallelujah for some of you your barriers are you don't know the books to read you don't know the dvds to buy you don't know who to meet i pray that spirit of god that gives direction the bible says you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk in it i prophesy this night receive direction for your destiny may the lord take you to the right books the right people the right anointings the right counsel the right dvds the right tapes the right mp3s in the name of jesus hallelujah lift your hands finally anyone here under any yoke of death that says you will not live to be at the top lift your hand so you see the way death is killing people like chickens i want to pray for you you have no covenant with death i'm telling you now hallelujah there are families the moment you rise up death just comes to take people i pray right now the bible says in six things shall he deliver you yea in seven things he said in the time of famine you will laugh i want to rebuke the hand of death that death that kills people look at the way lecturers are dying look at the way people are just dying like chickens a man will be standing a cow will come and carry him in the name that is above all names i declare the blood of jesus upon you exempts you for death it exempts you from death the blood is upon you you shall not die you shall not die you shall not die i speak to the earth i forbid it from receiving your body all earth share ye the word of the lord by this apostolic grace i command the earth to reject your body not be a victim of accident in the name of Jesus the spirit that destroys men in accidents you are exempted from it in the name of Jesus you will not be a victim of Boko Haram or any act of terrorism you will not be a victim of any activity of thieves and armed robbers ladies you will not be a victim of rape or gang violence lift your hands and give god thanks i tell you your spirit is fired up this night what do you have in your house hallelujah now very quickly if you're here and you've never given your heart to the Lord hallelujah we're still praying you're here and you've never made a decision for Jesus perhaps this is your first time of coming this night and you've been hearing my voice the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart hallelujah we're a family and we do not condemn anyone or some of you have given your heart to the Lord but honestly you know that you found yourself derailing from the things of God but tonight you have heard the word of God that you have a glorious destiny. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Reynard Bonke said the door is narrow but it's always open. Always open. Are you hearing me? Right now I'm going to make an altar call. Don't wait for somebody else to come. When I make that altar call as the spirit of God speaks to you, please come out here very quickly so that we'll pray for you. Lead you to Jesus Christ and you'll begin a journey. If you are not born again, it doesn't matter how many times you have prayed. Is all a waste Jesus is the door that will lead you into this experience right now wherever you are I want you to leave your seat and come out here right now you're giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you're rededicating your life please don't sit back don't sit back 
Don't sit back. Don't sit back. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. She's not the only one. God is still speaking to people. Leave your seat and come. Thank you, my brother. Koinonia, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Jesus is calling you today into a real experience. Enough of playing church. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is where it all starts. Keep coming. The Bible says, if all our hope is just in this life, we are of all men. God, most miserable. God bless you. Keep coming. If there are still more people who are waiting for you, I believe that the Lord is talking to somebody. I believe that the Lord is talking to somebody. Inside and outside. Make sure you don't sit back. No matter how far you are, keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let your friends stop you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus brought you here this night to start afresh again. Some of you, you are giving your heart to the Lord truly and seriously for the first time. Others, you have, you have given your heart to the Lord, but you are ready to make a commitment and a rededication. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I want you to lift your right hand as you pray this prayer. The Lord Jesus Christ is in this place. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I thank you for dying for my sins. Today, I have heard your word. I give up everything and I declare that you are my savior and you are my Lord. Sin is no longer part of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm a child of God. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Grant me the grace to live the victorious Christian life. From today, I'm a child of God. Transformed, changed. I'm not going back to yesterday. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by yourself. They are making true commitments for you. And Lord, I thank you because they were not ashamed. Let this be the beginning of their best days. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let this decision not be emotional. Lord, I thank you. Because these are genuine decisions that will last. Holy Spirit, we trust your power to keep and transform. And we thank you. Because truly this will be the beginning of great moments. In the name of Jesus. I salute you for making these great decisions. Please follow the ushers. They will have your details this way. You will meet with Pastor Jakes tomorrow. Some of you don't come for the meetings. Please, um, ushers or protocol, let them know the date for the follow-up. God bless you. I appreciate them very quickly. Soon we'll be out of here. If you're worshipping with us for the first time, I know that there are some families that have come here uh we discussed we minister to you but you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time of coming for koinonia this glorious prophetic meeting i'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly we want to bless you and pray for you you are welcome quickly 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 bless you bless you bless you bless everyone the lord brought you here by his spirit thank you mommies thank you thank you for coming no matter how far you are come we have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Keep coming. Don't stop. If you brought anybody and the person is not coming out, push the person. Push the person till he moves out. Say, come out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe that the Lord has done something remarkable in your life today. You will go back and see dramatic changes. Hallelujah. We want to pray for you. We have a prophecy and a blessing and I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. As we pray for you, the things we are speaking over your life for will happen. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we prophesy. We bless you in the name of Jesus. You are marked for greatness. We bless you. We bless you. We prophesy blessings upon your life. The Lord will give you what money can buy and what money cannot buy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video. 
as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.